Visit sayarite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to reupholster fabric side panels. These side panels go in an RV in a jackknife sofa application. The process for reupholstering fabric side panels is fairly easy. In this video, we're going to show you how it's done. The first step is determining how much fabric is required and removing the old fabric. The next phase of our jackknife sofa are the pads that go on the walls and at the kickboard, and this is a pad that goes behind the uh, sofa or couch. And how much fabric do I need? Well, this is a continuous piece. There are no seams in it. In fact, there's no sewing in this, which is kind of nice. Um, so I'm going to measure the length here, which is about 74, and then I want to come down the sides and have enough to wrap over here. So I'll add 15 inches to that times two, obviously, because I need it for that side. So 75 plus 15 and 15 is 105 inches. So this one requires three yards of fabric to run it along the running length. This one can be run beside it. I have enough for that. I can position this one here, which means I just need a little bit more fabric. Say this is only needed like 18 yards from, or 18 inches from here to here to wrap around the underside. So I really only need four yards for all of these. So we want to take off the old fabric. And the reason being is that the old fabric is usually dirty and it may have a little bit of uh, potential for mold if it's left on. So I'm just going to use a, a staple remover. This is my favorite staple remover that Sayerite stocks. And I'm going to remove these staples and pull the fabric off and inspect the foam on the inside. We'll do that with all these panels. So we have all the staples removed and that does take some time. Uh, let's take a look at the foam. Now, it's true that nobody really touches this foam. I mean, it's not compressed in any way because it's basically never been compressed much uh, uh, from occupants sitting on it. So I think I'm just going to leave it on. If I were going to replace it, or if it were in bad shape, I would replace it with a uh, uh, either a half inch um, sew foam and wrap it around here. We've removed all the fabric from the backer board and laid the panels, the fabric panels that is, on top of the decorative fabric. The decorative fabric is laying underneath uh, outside surface is down. I've laid the old scrap um, or old covers on top of it in approximately the area they would go. Now I'm not going to cut out all these um, cutouts here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little bit of extra fabric and just cut it out to the general size of each one of these panels. So you can see I'm leaving about two inches over here. I have about an inch extra. Um, and I'm just going to trim each one of these things out and uh, we'll show you what's next. This foam is in bad shape. I'm only going to be replacing this foam and as I talked about earlier, we're going to use a half inch sew foam. The reason it's called sew foam is it has a fabric on the back side so you could sew through it and the stitch won't pull through the foam side. So we're going to take this off and throw it away. So I'm going to take the board and lay it right on top of this sew foam to make sure the edges are going to have enough. I'll move it down closer. I'm just using my scissors and cutting as close to the edge as possible. It doesn't leave a perfect edge, but that's all going to compress anyway uh, when we wrap the fabric around it. We're going to turn this over and I usually like to place the uh, fabric side down and the foam side up. Um, reason being is that sometimes the fabric has wrinkles in it and the foam usually doesn't. And then I'm just going to put a few staples just to keep everything in place. This is not what uh, is going to hold it down. It's basically a fabric holding it down, but this will keep it from shifting. Okay, there we go. Now that the foam's replaced, if it's required, it's time to staple the fabric to the backer board. Okay, we're going to center it in our fabric, and basically you just want to fold the fabric over, and then you want to create nice corners. So what I like to do is I like to start on one end, I don't care if it's a long or short, and apply a little bit of tension and put two or 
two or three staples. Then I come over here and I make sure the fabric is nice and taut and I do the same thing over on this side. Okay, then I'll come over here and we will give it a little bit of tension and put a few staples here. Notice I'm not putting them all the way to the edge. We're going to cut off the excess later. And then on this side, I'm going to apply some tension, making sure the fabric is taut. Spread my hand out so that it's taut in a longer plane. Okay, so we have it in the right spot. Always a good idea to look to make sure that everything looks good. And it does. Okay, I'm stapling um, down each side, making sure that it's taut as I go. And inspect it to make sure that it looks good and that the pattern, if there is any pattern, is even. There is no pattern in this. So that looks good. So now what I like to do at the corner, and this is a pretty easy way to do it, before I get to the uh, full corner, I'm going to lift this corner up and I'm basically going to cut in uh, all, a little bit shy of the corner, straight down. So watch. And I'm going to stop sh shy of that corner, or of hitting the wood by about a half inch. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Okay, so we basically have a little, little square of fabric with sides that just come straight down uh, about a uh, half inch from the corner. And then what I do is I staple this on to that corner and I do the same thing here. Now we can cut away some of this excess here because it's kind of not necessary. We're just going to cut it away from there for now. Then we'll come over here and we'll staple here. And we can cut away some of this. Just to get it out of the way. And see we have this that we can pull down, but we don't need all this excess here. So I'm going to cut it a couple inches above that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull fairly tight here. And if you'd like to, you could put a staple in there kind of at a 45 degree angle there. And then pull pretty tight here. Put a staple there. And then just pull this back and see what that does. It creates a very nice corner. And then just staple this down. There we go. So we're going to do this to all four of the corners and that's what it should look like when you're done. So now we just cut away the excess and we still have to get that hole or deal with that hole for the um, for the vent. Not the vent, for the heater vent. I guess it's called a vent, isn't it? I'm going to take a razor blade and I have a sacrificial table on the underside. Don't do this on your wife's table. <laughs> she will kill you. Okay, so I cut an X in that and then we can just cut out. We can just cut the X out and then we can start modifying the circle until we get it uh, small enough for that vent to fit back in here. Okay, let's see if it fits now. Oh yeah, it's gonna fit nicely in there. And then we'll screw it down. All right, I don't know if this goes on a specific way, but we can twist it after we're done. There we go. Nice. So you can see here, this is a rounded corner. So it's not a 90 degree corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away some of this bulk because this bulk is just going to cause um, more puckers. So we have that away. And what you want to do here is you just want to create pleats, making sure that the fabric on the outside looks good. So here I have a wrinkle. But the fabric on the outside looks good. I got another wrinkle there, but that's all right. It's on the back side. Just want to pull the fabric out until it looks good there. The, the outside's going to look great. Pull it there, staple it down. And 
end. Let's see if we can get that one down. Now you got a beautiful rounded corner and you can't see any of the wrinkles except for on the back side. And then we'll trim some of these away just to make sure that it sits flat. All of the other upholstered panels are pretty much the same, so we're not gonna show any more of those. But we are gonna show this large block of foam on a backer board. As you can see, the backer board on this one broke, so what I've done is I've made a new backer board, and I didn't have one long enough, so I just glued a section of wood, and this is the side that'll have the foam go on. This foam's in actually not that bad a shape, so the way I take off foam is often I just use a putty knife and I just go underneath the foam with the putty knife and that breaks the bond and I try not to damage the foam as I do this. Um, sometimes putting it on the edge of a table like this and just going down be between the board and the foam is a quick way to get it done. So I'll flip it over once I get all the way down to the other end. Since the thin backer board was damaged, we're going to glue it to a new thin backer board. This is the old uh, backer board that I've taken the foam off of, and there was a gap here, and then there was a little bit of board sticking out here. So I positioned my old foam on my new board and just marked the edge so that I know that this is where the foam goes. Now we do have a block here in the middle that I used to uh, basically bond this wood together. So I'm just going to make a little cutout for that, just so that you can't feel that. I really can't feel it at all, but I just want to be safe. We're just going to take out a little chunk where that uh, wood piece goes. And you can see that an electric kitchen knife actually works pretty well doing this. I'm going to come in at an angle here and take that out. So, what do they say about the princess and the pea? Well, in this situation, it would be the princess and a board. We don't want the princess to feel the board. There we go. So now, with that cutout, now it's perfect. So now we're going to glue these two together. I'm going to use uh, 3M General Trim Adhesive. And we're going to put the nozzle on uh, medium, which is right there. There's a medium, a heavy, and a light. And I've already shaken the can. We will coat the board with a good amount of the spray glue. And we will also coat the foam. So you want to coat both surfaces as well. Once the glue becomes tacky on both surfaces, you're ready to bond. And you might want a second helper for this, but you can make adjustments. I need this closer to me. So before it sets up, you can actually adjust it a little bit. So we want it even with this side. A little bit off here, so I just reposition it. In the next there. chapter, we're going to cover it with fabric. Typically, to get a good look, you'll cut boxing in pieces there and then go. sew them in place. But for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to fold the fabric over the ends. No sewing. Watch how we do it. Okay, we've got our fabric on the table, and I'm going to position this. This is the side that, that the fabric tucks in over this lip, and so I want to pull the fabric over. I need to make sure that I have enough to cover this end, and I do, and uh, if I scoot it over, I have plenty for this side as well. So it's basically centered between here. This side's not cut straight, but this is actually the selvage edge, and it is cut straight. So I'm going to wrap it around the foam, and so that it comes over the back side, and I have plenty of fabric to tuck this in because this gets tucked and stapled. So what I want to do is I just want to uh, basically have a level playing field here on the back side since this side is straight. So I'm going to try to give it about an in two inches down of the fabric. And that way I know my fabric's going on for fairly straight. 
There, does that look straight across it? Yes, it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack the bottom side on first with uh, quarter inch staples. So I'm going to come down here, start in the middle. Make sure this looks straight all the way across and is fairly taut. So now that this is secure, I can tuck it or turn it over and then I'm going to again start at the center and I'm going to put my long nose staple very close to the foam. And we're just going to come down and draw the fabric up tight to the foam, keeping that staple in that little pit, or if you know what I mean, or valley. So now that we have that on, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to pull tight from the middle. And we're going to just put a few staples in here. We don't want to pull so tight that we it cause hard spots. So we're going to make sure the, the fabric is nice and flat. And I'm using a quarter inch staple still. I'm going to put a couple staples here. and pull fairly taut. For the end here, we want this to wrap around and be stapled, but we have way too much fabric here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in about an inch away from this board, or out I should say, and I'm going to cut down like that and I'm going to stop before I get to that, uh, the top portion of the foam, about an inch as well, and I'm going to take this out. So basically I'm taking a square out and I'm going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to start with this side, we're going to fold this in and uh, basically just create a little corner up here with the fabric um, fairly taut. So I'm pulling pretty hard here and yet I'm keeping my hand down here. So I'm going to apply a staple right here, probably two. I can always remove them if it doesn't look good. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm gonna, now with this we have to come around this board, board here. It looks like it needs a staple right about there. So we'll tuck this in. This is going to wrap around, so we'll just tuck this under and staple that there. Make sure your, your hand's not underneath just in case the staple comes through. I'm using a quarter inch staple, so I probably won't have any problem. A staple here. And then we can fold these in until it looks good. So we're going to just basically tuck in all that extra fabric until it covers the end nicely and that we're happy with the the fold and I think that looks pretty good like that. I'm going to pull fairly taut, put a staple over here and then we're going to check this side. I think, yeah I think that'll work. When it comes to doing the other end, the process is typically done in the exact same manner, except it does have a, a little lip of uh, back or board that sticks out, so we have to work around that. We're only going to show a portion of the opposite end because it's done basically in the same manner. Let's move on to there it. There we go. Yes, it's starting to look better. Still need to fold this in more. There we go. Nice. Now put some staples in here. A 
Okay, now all we have to do is wrap this around and make it look good from this side. And as you can see, we need to fold this in so that it basically comes in line with this side. And I'm actually gonna make it uh, so that I can't see it from this side. So I'm gonna make it kind of like a 45 right at that corner. I've just basically created a fold here that kind of comes down even with this side. And then I'll wrap it around to the back side, pull it fairly taut. There, that side is done. Now we just cut off the excess fabric and if you see anything that's a little bit loose, you can oftentimes, like we don't have a lot of staples along this perimeter, so we probably want to kind of pull it tight and put more staples in. You should have staples at least an inch apart. If it's not, then you may not have a tight assembly. So these are our finished upholstered pieces for the jackknife sofa for our RV. Now we just have to reinstall everything the way we took it apart. We're not going to be showing that because obviously you've already done that if you've reached this point in the video. There are multiple ways to attach fabric panels. For the side panels, we're going to use screw covers. These are the upholstered panels, and I'm going to put them in the position they were last time, which is basically all the way to the back. This is a snap together screw cover, and I can take a number six all the way up to a number 12 uh, screw put it in there and then we can cover the screw head by snapping the cover on top. I'm going to position it, there is no right or wrong place to position it. I think I'm going to position it right here. I think it will look good and I'll put one over there at that end as well. There we go. So once we have the panel secured, we just snap the top on and you've got an attractive uh, button for your application. We hope this tutorial video has been helpful for you and your upholstered panels. Coming up next is a materials and tools list. We have hundreds of decor and upholstery fabrics that are great for upholstered panels like this. We also have seating vinyls that you can use as well. The upholstered panel underneath our jackknife sofa was secured with screws from the back side. If you have any questions about the materials or the tools or this project, please feel free to give Sayerite a call or email us. We're glad to help. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.